What's going on everybody? It's your favorite Auntie Mo and we are back for another episode review of Love After Lockup. This is season 2 episode 30, Menace to Society. That was one of my favorite ass movies. Shout out to Old Dog. <laughs> Before we get into the review, if you have not done so just yet, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think of this video with a thumbs up or thumbs down and hit that notification bell so you will know whenever I upload new content. Y'all, this episode was okay. Listen, I'm going to say what everybody been saying this whole time. This new season of the Love After Lockup people are boring as hell. They boring, y'all. They boring as hell. Um, at least I got a little update on Goldie. So we know what's going on with Goldie. You know what I'm saying? But other than that, they boring as hell. But, um... I'm going to still give y'all a good old review. Hopefully, y'all are ready for it because I'm ready to give it to you. So, let's get right on up into it. First of all, happy Saturday, everybody. It's like 7.30 in the morning. I'm bright-eyed, bushy tail. I ain't drinking no liquor because li I'm a lady. <laughs> my wine old hours start after 11.30. Thank you very much. So, um, I just got me some good old juice this morning. Good old orange juice that I'm drinking on. Hopefully everybody has a good Saturday. My goal is to get this video up at least before 3 o'clock. Just so I can enjoy the rest of my Saturday that I've worked so hard for. So I can do absolutely nothing. Take this bra right back off and let my fun bags just walk around this house and chill. You know what I'm saying? Y'all ladies already know what you want to do on a Saturday when you've been working all goddamn week. Working hard as hell like a Hebrew slave. You don't want to do a damn thing. It's bad enough I already got to be a mom and I got to do something with my son later on. Y'all, I'm starting to ramble because I'm just thinking about the time that I got to go spend away from my bed later on. But... We're going to start off with um, Lacey and John. Let's just go ahead and get them out the way, y'all. Okay, so Lacey is back at home. She's with her babies and her daddy because, you know, her daddy was babysitting the kids, right? And I thought it was so cute the way her kids came outside and they hugged her, embraced her and all that. It was so cute. She got two boys and a girl. Her dad is asking her, how did the photo shoot go, baby? Like, let me know how it went. I know you had to drive seven hours to get there. Like, what all was it? What did they have you do? You know, she lied to her daddy. Told her daddy she was going to a damn photo shoot. When she really went, drove seven hours to pick up a convict that she don't even know nothing about. Convict, excuse me. That she don't know nothing about. She like, um, it was nice. Like, there were, there were photos and... It was like a camera there, and then lights, and there was like a photo shoot. It was really, really cool. Like, she couldn't even come up with a damn, you didn't have no lie together before you came back home to tell your daddy. You know your daddy was going to ask you how everything went. Child, she damn sure can't tell him that she went to go see Shane when we already know daddy ain't even feeling John, right? So later on, daddy in the backyard, because it was a real bad snow, um, thunderstorm because you remember she got caught in a damn tsunami as well trying to go see Shane girl so daddy in the back trying to put together everything that got blown around or whatever so daddy is asking her so when is the last time you heard from John like what's going on with this whole situation here she like well daddy I ain't talked to him you know he on lockdown but regardless of the fact he's getting paroled back here and you just gonna have to get with the program daddy like I ain't got to get with the program I'm goddamn thing I don't like this fool man Lacey then tells her father, I think Marlo, which is her second child, six-year-old son, I think Marlo might be John's baby. Daddy looking like, girl, why do you think that? She says when she was married to her ex-husband that her and John messed around around the same time that she got pregnant and she feels like her son looks exactly like John. Now, Daddy, like, did I raise a damn fool? Girl, really? Now, Daddy is the only one that's actually making sense. Daddy's like, I'm 65. Now, think how I would feel at 65 if you come and tell me the Daddy that I thought I knew ain't the Daddy. Because the Daddy was asking, like, damn, does Marlo know? Like, and I would hope he don't. She was like, no, he don't know. Just think how that's going to devastate that baby. Because you got a thing for convicts. You can't stay away from them. So you, you done slipped off with John. And then John don't even know that that might be his baby. She later on goes and visits him at the jail. Now, before she goes, he calls her. He's like, look here. Where you at? What you been doing? She's like, well, I'm actually on my way right now. I'm going to come and see you. Like, what's going on? 
He's like, you ain't been calling me, you ain't been answering my phone calls, you've been blocking me, ending me, texting me, and now, how they got all these phone privileges in the penitentiary? Where he, is he at Cupcake Camp? Can he use the phone like that? But you know, hey, I don't know nothing about that life, but if you say you can call back to back and you can do all of that, I mean, damn, what kind of prison is that? You know what I'm saying? But she smoothed like a like butter with it. She's like, John, I just don't want to argue with you. He's like, all right, I'm not going to argue with it. Do you miss me? Oh, her voice. Her voice. He was like, yeah, of course I miss you, girl. I can't wait to see you. She gets there. She's getting ready to tell him about Shane or the possibility of Marlo being his son. I don't know. But, child, we're going to see what happens next week with that. Now, mind you, Lacey once again says when she lets him know about Shane, she wants to do this in a public place because she knows that he going to go ape shit. Now, girl, what? at what point... Do you need to realize you need to start playing with these convicts like that? You gonna wake up dead. Just saying. Next up, y'all, we got Cheryl and Josh. Now, he comes to visit her at the hotel. She's still down there with him until she has to go back with her babies, right? Now, they're at the hotel room. They're chilling. He says that he has over pause before i get into that though chai it was so damn funny she said josh is like her prince charming but her prince charming has some glitches kind of like a used laptop baby i about passed the hell out when she said that because i felt her. my laptop got some glitches sometimes <laughs> but it's my laptop god damn it. it's mine and i love him it's mine damn it he says that he has over 85000 no, over 84000 almost $85,000 that he has to pay the state in restitution fees. He says when he was 18, he went on a couple of high-speed chases, wrecked a couple of cars, wrecked, wrecked some property in the process. All of that added up to almost $85,000 that he has to pay back to the state, right? Now, he says he's set up on a payment plan where he has to pay $40 a month. Now, baby, $40 a month to pay off $85,000? Your kid's going to be paying that off, baby. Oh, no, ma'am. Cheryl, she's making sense. She was like, how about you try to pay at least $100 a month? You know what I'm saying? Like, come on now. His thing is... He, he can't get his license until he pays his restitution fees, right? He can't work unless he has a license. So he can't pay his restitution fees if he doesn't have a job. Now, I, I work closely with the jails, so I, I, I know how it can be when a lot of these you know men and women that have been convicted of different felonies get out and how they try to pick up their lives afterwards and yes the the criminal justice system makes it really hard for people to rehabilitate themselves and get back and try to get back into you know civilization and get their livelihood together that's just me advocating for him because i completely i mean i i get what he's saying i i completely get that i feel like if you gonna let some of these prisoners out i mean goddamn set them up with something, that's just me. I understand you do the crime, do the time, all of that. But at the same time, I look at people as humans. And as humans, you got to be able to set them up so when they get out, damn, they can make their own money. They can pay back to society and pay their debts like, you know, like regular human beings. That's just me, though. You know what I'm saying? She wants to pay $100 a month for him. Oh, y'all, look at this natural light coming through. I'm trying to do something a little different since I come through light. Ew, hit my skin all nice and like butt and shit. But he don't want her to do that. He like, look here, I don't want to be dependent on some female paying for me all the time when I could be out here trying to do this by myself. Her thing is, well, look here, you say you can't work or you don't want to work because you ain't got your license. You ain't finna go back to the penitentiary. Like, I've been here for two years for you, holding you down. She makes the comment something or another like, oh, so I guess I was only good enough for you when you were locked up. In that moment, he agrees. I think he was just irritated, and so he just flew off and, you know, said what was ever on his mind at that point in time, because I don't think he damn meant that. He loved that damn crazy-ass girl. They end up getting into it. Child, I didn't realize how little Cheryl is. Cheryl, like, this big. Baby, if you... 
You gonna knock her ass smooth over. But she gets mad, they get into it. Long story short, they end up making up from it because his whole thing was like, look here, I can't deal with these mood swings you got. You know what I'm saying? One minute you cool as hell, next minute you bat shit crazy. Ain't nobody got time for that. You don't have to reel that shit in, pump your brakes, and hold it down. You know what I'm saying? So like I said, they end up making up from that. Hopefully something, he needs to go get a part of a convict program or something. Go work for the Goodwill or something. Because nigga, don't use that as no excuse why you can't get no job. Because I can see that at the same time too. While I'm advocating for you, trying to be on your side, I can also see you be like, well, hell, I can't work. I ain't got no license. Now, nigga, you better get out there and shove some shit and do something. It's something you can do. Mickey D's is always hiring. Goodwill hires convicts. So don't get out there with all of that. Nah. Uh. All right, y'all. So next we got Vincent and Amber. He's driving her. She's getting ready to go to the nail shop to get her toes done or whatever, right? He's driving her there. He gets a phone call from his nana. He's excited. He's a grandma's boy. I feel him, though, because my nana was my best friend, too. Baby, me and my nana, my nana was an old nasty dirty bird. And I love her and I miss her so much. My foxy mama, that's my girl. He got so excited. But what was odd is when nana called, he's like, oh, Lita, whatever he called her. He was like, um, yeah, I'm doing a side job right now. I'll call you when I get back into town. Aaron was kind of like, nigga, side job? Another red flag. Because we already know it's something it's something off about Vincent. We don't know what it is, but it's something a little off about Vincent. He goes and he drops her off at the nail shop. She ends up meeting her homegirl there. Come to find out they were cool before they got locked up. They end up getting locked up, got cool in there, spent some time together. Now they're homegirls, bestie booze, period, poop. They're out there getting their toes done. Now, Amber is telling her homegirl, like, look here, this dude, Vincent, you remember how, you know, dude I met on catchakiller.com or whatever that was on, he has, you know, it's a bunch of red flags about him. He done went so far as adopted puppy. Homegirl already, she was like, oh, no, girl. And that fool is crazy. He's a damn con artist. He done did this before. How you gonna know to adopt somebody like that? Like, no, nah, fool. You done did this before. Now, remember, they supposed to be going out later on for this little get-together. She's gonna meet, no, he's gonna meet her family and friends. Now, homegirl is like, well, when we get to this little dinner tonight, um... I'm going to charge his ass up. Look at that natural light coming through again. Ew. Let me stop. Y'all have to get a little conceited there. Stop it, Mo. Okay, girl, I'm sorry. But I'm going to like, look here. I'm going to question his ass later on because I don't know what his intentions are. But any mofo that just want to go so far and go and adopt your, your boo behind your back and going to call you and tell you about it later, like, no. Nah. And at that same regard, puppy, you couldn't tell your homegirl that you was getting adopted, you was up for adoption. Like the whole scenario right there is crazy as hell. I'm anxious about, I want puppy to get out now. I'm ready for puppy to get out because she's the other link in this whole little triangle right here. I got to know, Nick. I got to know. <laughs> Girl, next y'all, we got Glorietta and Alex. Y'all, Glorietta is a hot ass mess. <laughs> she is a hot ass mess, girl. She got all these 50 lemon hundred balloons ready to go pick up Alex from the prison, right? As she's driving down there, she all in the car crying, oh my God, I can't wait to see him. I miss him so much. Oh my God. Just bawling and crying like, girl, what is you crying? You better go see him, girl. Oh my God, my makeup. It's gonna be so ugly and I just wanna be pretty when I see my man. I was like, girl, if you don't pull your ass over, smoke a blunt, pop a Xanax, do something, child. Cause you, you girl, you just doing too damn much, child. Calm down. She gets to the damn prison to pick him up. She goes in there with all these 50 lemon balloons, like she about to attach them to a goddamn house and go up. Goes inside the damn prison. They tell her, okay, um, he, he's coming out down there. You might as well go ahead on outside. We'll bring him out in a minute. She goes outside with her 50 lemon honey balloons. Child, she hear gunshots. No, ma'am. I done left right then and there. I done went and got my ass in the car. Oh, they shooting out here. Nigga, I be in the car. Hello, hi, daddy. Come over here. Uh-uh, you too damn close to that shit. Finally, he comes outside. They embrace He's little bitty. I think he was so little like he was. I was like, oh, he's so cute. 
Little OG, trippy little OG, looking little, little, he, he little, but he cock strong, but he little though. But y'all, I give him to him. His voice was kind of cute. I was like, oh. Say Monique. <laughs> Girl, they get out. He's kissing it. I mean, it's their first time actually embracing. You know what I'm saying? When they ain't talking on the phone or they ain't, you know, through the little prison screen, you can't see me thing that they threw or whatever, right? They trying to get back to the car. This heifer done lost the car. She forgot where she parked. You ain't got no alarm. You can't click, 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 click that motherfucker until you find out where you at, girl. So finally, they find the car. He gets over to the car. He releases the balloons in the air. She's like, oh my God, it's so beautiful. It's like, it's like therapeutic or something. Girl, he ain't want them down. What convict gonna do with some balloons? Uh, 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 it, now it depends if you try to put something in them balloons and put them somewhere. But child, he ain't gonna do nothing with them up balloons, baby. Come on now. But it was cute. You know what I'm saying? It was the first time seeing each other, first time meeting. I wonder does he know that she's, you know, as as um she got a lot of space up here. I want to see aware of that. Because listen, he said that he told her the first time that they started talking on the phone, it was just simply for him to pass the time. They had no, or he had no intentions of actually making something serious with her. He just needed something to do as an escape from him being in a penitentiary, so he was talking to her. But after so many months, it ended up them building a relationship to now, here it is a year later, and they're engaged. Child, we gonna see what's going on. I'm ready for him to meet her mama. Because, baby, her mama don't play. <laughs> My mama don't like you. She likes everyone. <sighs> Next, y'all, we got Lizzie and Daniel. Now, look here. Let me just cut right to it. Lizzie is disrespectful as hell. Lizzie is disrespectful as hell. Now, she drops Daniel off at his mama's house. He says how he wishes that he can live with Lizzie. But, you know, she living with her mom and daddy. She working down at the 7-Eleven. So, she ain't got no funds to have her own place and so none of that, right? So he's living with his mom. Now he gets there and he really doesn't want to be there, right? And mom can tell that mom was excited to see him. She embraces him, hugs him. You know, of course he hugs her back, but she was like, so, you know, how does it feel to be back after all this time? He's like, I mean, I'm, I, you know what I'm saying? She's like, oh, you don't want to be here? He's like, nah, it's just too crowded. His thing is, they don't have the best relationship. They're always getting into it. They're always arguing. I mean, you can clearly see that in these last couple of episodes. They seem like they have a really stressful relationship, the two of them, right? So they kind of get to arguing because his thing is he's trying to stick up for Lizzie. Her thing is, as a mother, I know in my gut of guts, some ain't right. She not giving you the whole story on everything. And she ain't lying. Because how many got doggone episodes is we in and we still don't know what in the hell Lizzie's secret is? Like, do she got a peg leg with a kickstand? Is, is she part of a circus? Like, what is this woman's secret? Does she got kids? Is she married? Like, wh wh what's going on with her? I need to know what the doggone secret is. Mama, like, look here. This is all I need you to understand. She likes to drink a lot. I know you've got a past history of addiction. I just don't want to see you going back to the same old BS that you was in before. He like, look here, you just got to give her a chance. I don't want you judging her. They get into it later on. Lizzie ends up coming to the house, call herself confronting his mama. Right or wrong. You shouldn't be fronting somebody's mama like that. That's your first time actually like really like trying to build up something with this boy being fresh out of jail. This how you come at her sideways like that? Like I get it. Mama was wrong. She shouldn't have been talking about you like that to her family and then you overheard that. Complete, I agree with that. Totally agree with that. You got a problem with me, you come let me know about it. But at the same time, girlfriend, um, this is my mama. This could be your mother-in-law. Don't disrespect her like that. I don't like the way she did that. I don't know if it's just because I'm a mom and I'm a little bit old school, but I don't like the way she disrespected her like that. Like, as they're talking, her and Lizzie kind of gets into it a little bit. She starts going off on the mama. You won't effing let me talk and you effing cutting me off. Notice I'm saying effing. I ain't saying F word because I done hit my 4,000 hours. I'm trying to get monetized around this. Yeah, yeah, I'm saying. But 
I don't like how they was having that exchange like that. That was getting on my nerves. I was like, girl, mama, you better than me because I started taking stuff. I've been like, look here, girl. I ain't been saved my whole life. You catch these paws, these hands, whatever you want to do. But they actually end up, you know, mama forgives her and, you know, obey, I wouldn't say forgive her. Mama decides that she's going to give her a chance because, you know, she, she, they hug it out and Lizzie and Daniel leave and go to the bar to meet up with her friends to get drunk. Yeah, I mean... We gonna see what's gonna happen with that. I need to know what the hell the secret is that Lizzie's been holding on to. We are so many episodes up in here and still don't know what the hell this doggone secret is. I got to know, we TV now. Oh my God, child. Last week we got Andrea and Gaudi. Gaudi. Y'all, one of y'all, one of my nieces out there told me uh, last video that this fool got five more years. Boo, I didn't know that, girl. Girl. So, you see, you watched the episode by Simon Nees since after watching it. I know, boo, you done already watched the episode. So, girl, you see, she done met up with the doggone detective, right? You already know. The detective, he's, he's worked on LaMondre's case before. And he's like, look here, what is it that you want to know? Like, basically, what is you bringing me here for? Her sister was the one that actually set up the meeting because the sister knows uh, the detective, right? And so, Andrea's like, I just want to know, do you think he's changed? Do you think, like, he's the same Lamondre? Right? Or you think, like, he's a different person? Detective is like, no, ma'am. He's crazy. All precincts have their top ten. Goldie was at the top five of Daytona Beach, baby. He was Scarface about these streets. Like... What y'all understand? No. No. Uh-uh. I don't think that. She also asked the detective, like, does he know what's going on with his case? Because, you know, Goldie told her that he was getting ready to get out. She got upset. She had everything packed, getting ready to go get him. That's when he called and said he's not getting out. Well, the detective is like, he got a 15-year sentence, but he's done three, four years already. He probably got, like, five more years to go. I don't know if he got, like, time served for some other time or what. She like, excuse me, what? He like, yeah, probably like five more years or something like that. He told her that his appeal was approved, but he didn't tell her all the details. I don't know if that's because he didn't know or he just didn't want her to know. Like the detective is saying, yes, sweetheart, his appeal got went through, but that means that he gets a second chance to go back to court over the same damn charges, baby. That don't mean he finna get out of the prison, baby. He still finna be in a penitentiary for a while, sweetheart. He didn't tell her all that. Or maybe he did tell her. I don't know. Now, he couldn't have told her that because she thought she was finna go pick his ass up. But go, do you wrong for that? And we TV, y'all wrong as hell for that too. No wonder why we only got that one interview with him this whole time and ain't seen Tim no dog no more. We TV, y'all wrong for that. Y'all owe me some explanations, okay? I need to know what the hell is going on. With doggone Lizzie, I need to know when the hell is puppy getting out of jail? Where the hell is Angela and Tony? I need to know what's going on with that. Like, y'all owe me answers, we TV. If y'all watched this episode, if it was anything that I missed, please put it down below and let me know. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And Auntie Mo, we'll see y'all in the next video. Peace out. What's up, y'all? Do me a favor and share the video. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think and um, hit that notification button so you will be up to date when I upload my latest videos. Ahala.